DNA Nudge is the brainchild of Imperial University's Regis Engineering Professor, Chris Tumazu. We differ by about 0.1%, and it's that 0.1% that differentiates us from whether we got propensities to genetic diseases, whether or not we can metabolize various foods, whether or not we can metabolize drugs, etc., etc. Okay. This chip here has 96 wells. So effectively, we've taken propensities for things like type 2 diabetes, obesity, hypertension. These are these genetic errors. We then spread those across those wells. So once your DNA is then extracted from your saliva, your DNA is then spread over those wells. And once it's matched to a primer, we know that you've got that genetic propensity. If it doesn't match, you haven't got that propensity. So it's a process of matched and unmatched sequence, basically, on this, on this particular chip. And that's all done in situ in an area as small as this. This replaces an entire laboratory, replaces white coats, pipettes, machines, three or four weeks of lab time, the cost, the speed, everything is done. And more importantly, privacy. The fact is that because your genetic uh, sample, whether it's a cell or saliva, is actually within the device itself, once the test is done, this is thrown away. So Chris, when I filmed with you earlier this year, you had just launched the DNA Nudge cartridges, which were designed to help people make better food choices. And since then, you've adapted the cartridges to a very different purpose related to COVID-19. Um, what can you tell us about that? Back in uh, March, it was actually March that um, was the eureka moment. You know, we were sitting down in the lab and we started thinking, well, look, you know, all we have to do to this is basically change the primers on our chip, the bait, to bait that can detect effectively corona. That was the first step. And to change some of the mix in the cartridge to transcript from RNA to DNA. So what, what, once, once you've inserted the, the swab into the cartridge, we're able then to extract the virus, introduce it into our cartridge and do the initial testing. And that's when we went, wow, because it's almost binary. You've either got the virus or you don't. That's the beauty of it, see. Um, it, unlike the genetics that we were looking at, where we're looking at mutations in our DNA, in our sequence here, we're just looking at, do you have the viral RNA or don't you? And you can be asymptomatic and still have the virus. Exactly, and, it's, and it couldn't be quite infectious. Um, in fact, one of the clinical virologists at St. Mary's had a very, very small cough on the first day we tested this. And we asked him to go to his car and just test himself with a cartridge, which he did. And he was so positive. He would not have known. He was so positive. One of the strongest signals we'd ever seen. So he went home into isolation. But what we did is we gave, so imagine if he hadn't, and he could have spread it, obviously. We gave him five cartridges to go home with. So every day for, I think for seven days, he distributed a swabbing of five cartridges. So he stored five cartridges. So day seven, he came out and had another swab. And what we were able to do is measure through this, detect the virus on those five, six, seven days. And we saw the regression of the virus until se the seventh day, there was a very weak positive signal. So, it's, so the virus actually stayed in the device for the number of days and we could actually monitor. So, that could be another important use, actually, the continuous monitoring. When people are in isolation and they want to come out of isolation, you could courier them the cartridges, they swap, and then we can measure the reduction. That's astonishing. So it really is a lab in cartridge rapid test if you're able to see those results in an hour. Exactly. I mean, the, the, the whole idea, you know, has been to... Uh, reduce the throughput um, and you know as, as we know in the field today uh, PCR tests the, the, the big testing is taking some 24 to 48 hours and that's because 
there's this huge manual process. You know, once the, the swab is taken, it be a nasal swab. I mean, here's a typical swab that's used in the field. Um, a nasal swab that might go into the nasal frenzel up in, uh, up in the nostrils or in the throat. This then has to go into viral transport media to keep the uh, virus alive. Then it has to go to a laboratory, a very, very well, high quality, very well contained laboratory. Um, from that, one extracts the RNA and then that goes into a big PCR machine. And that machine not only does one individual's test, it, it tests for many, many, many uh, individual targets. And then after that, the results get then processed, they then get recorded, and then it goes back to the hospital, then the patient. So that whole process could take 48 to 36 hours sometimes. And it's because of that sort of long-winded throughput. With this, we can do it instantly. I mean, the, the sample bit, the throughput has gone completely down because, well, take a swab, maybe a quick nasal swab, goes into the nostril. This then goes into the cartridge. Then a little button clip closes it up. Everything's then sealed, completely sealed. Once it's sealed, you've contained the virus. This then goes into our nudge box where the actual cartridge will fit into the box. You close the cartridge, you close the box, and within just over an hour, the results will come through on your phone. We will start deploying this within particular niche areas where the point of care uh, aspects are really, really useful. Um, eventually, uh, you know, obviously we'd like to go to care homes and then move into sort of uh, the community. But at the moment, the Department of Health are quite keen for us to still focus on those borderline cases in areas where staff might be, um, they might have a suspicion of the virus, but not quite there, quick testing. Also mentioned maternity ward surgery, A&E. Those are the areas that we're collaborating on that.